Good afternoon, boys and girls. And by the skin of our teeth, we have made it. We are about two minutes late because the IT gremlins decided that I needed to install new drivers onto my system. But of course, they didn't tell me that until I tried to make things uh, start going live. But anyway, never mind. Better late than never. And we are here for episode 192 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilates, but not only with me, because once again, we are joined by the inimitable Max Forty, all the way from the East Coast of the USA. How are you today, Max? Doing fantastic. How's everyone doing out there in uh, Fragrance Land? Here with Papa Persilates. Thanks so much for having me again. <laughs> there are people who are on the verge of being banned from this channel, but there's only one person who's allowed to get away with that, and it's you. Thank you very much to all of you for bearing with us. Well, actually, as I was trying to sort things out, Mr. Forty was um, waiting patiently for things to get going, and I'm just going to make sure that everything is all right on the tablet here as well. Thanks to those of you who've left comments so far. People saying, uh, A to Z in one is saying, greetings from San Francisco. Euro saying, Euro, hello, beautiful people. Hope you're all having a lovely day. And what we are doing today, as you will be aware, Max, is presenting one of our themed top 10 lists. Uh, so five from me, five from Max. And what we are looking at today is our top 10, top five underrated perfumes. And this is a little bit of a minefield. For one thing, it's open to interpretation. And, and you can say what you took it to mean in, in, in a moment, Max. But basically, I just thought, you know, perfumes that maybe don't get the, 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 the love that they should get, don't get the attention that they should get, even though I am sure that as soon as we talk some about some of these, there will be lots of people saying, but what are you talking about? This one gets tons of appreciation. This one gets tons of acclaim. So I guess these are, you know, these are what I consider to be underrated. How did you approach this, Max? Actually, the same way you did, uh, you know, just I think a lot of brands don't get the love that they deserve, whether, you know, because you understand, you know, the, the Internet is what makes or breaks a brand, if you will. And a lot of these houses, if they're not doing much of marketing, merchandising, or, or reaching out, maybe they don't, they don't get talked about, which is a shame. So what I took in consideration is brands that I loved over the years, and I don't rarely hear anything, if, if anything, uh, about them. And I thought was you know a great time to share them with people and bring some limelight to these brands. Okay, so, so maybe you've gone, well, we'll find out what you've gone for down the brand route, whereas I've... I mean, there are, I'm looking here and there are at least three brands here that are actually extremely well known, but I've gone maybe for perfumes within the brands that aren't particularly well known. Keep the comments coming, folks. Keep the questions coming. You know that we like to keep these sessions interactive. And also I should say, please uh, keep checking out Max's uh, YouTube channel uh, for his own videos, obviously. He's, he's a very, very prolific YouTuber, but also for the videos that he and I have done together, we've been doing a decade by decade series and then we've recorded all of them now but the next one that is due to be released on your channel is the 2000s isn't it max that is correct uh, yeah a lot of fun lovely to to chat with with uh with bearish personalities we talked about culture the fashion music a little bit of movie industry just you know an overall in each one of those decades and of course covering the top brands and our favorites lots of fun great great little chats they're about 45 minutes to an hour but it, you'll zip right through them because they're a lot of fun and, and we had great fun doing them for you. I, I certainly did. Let's take some more hellos. Bren says, hi from Ireland. It's cold Arctic summer. It's pretty cold here in the south of England as well. Don't even get me started on the weather. Um, A2Z in one says, super persilase. That I could live with. I can live with that one. <laughs> or maybe I will grow to earn that title. Peggy's saying hello from Antwerp in Belgium. Uh, Simone is saying, hello, everyone, from Ramat Hasharon in Israel. I like the sound of that place. Um, oh, David is making his own suggestion. Garlan Ideal, the entire line. Interesting. And as Wuzi says here, either people will be saying, what are you talking about? That's really amazing. Or people are going to be saying, what are you talking about? That's terrible. So we may get, we may get some people completely disagreeing with our choices. But we should get this show on the road and i can't get rid of that comment now here we go okay uh people saying hello from south carolina from buckingham show from texas um somebody's asking whether you're featuring monsieur by frederick mal today well i'm not saying anything right let's go with your first choice max what is your top well not top but was your first underrated perfume but before I do that, a fragrance check. 
Are you wearing anything today? What's your scent of the day? I happen to be wearing something just because I'm testing it again for a potential review. I'm really, really taken with this, so I don't want to give any spoilers away, but I'm wearing from Garlin what they call Royal Extract 2, which is a Harrods exclusive, and it is just the most heavenly retro floral, but that's all I want to say. It is also just the most divinely expensive perfume ever because it is fiendishly expensive but what are you wearing actually not wearing anything yet i'm thinking that i'm going to be wearing one of these beauties over here uh, by the okay. time we're, if we're finished today so i'm going to start with a brand that i absolutely love and i have a couple not so many i think i have to get more of this of this brand just because i think they do tremendous quality they're not very talked about i wonder if some of these are even still available today this one here is, I love leather. So this is a leather. It's a very sultry, very voluptuous and scrumptious type of a leather. This is going to be from Naomi Goodsir, and this is going to be Cure Velours. I hope, ah, I'm, not, I hope yeah. I'm not butchering the name there, but Cure Velours. Do you know a little bit of French? Like what does Velours mean? Is it like a... Velvety. So it's, ve velvety. it's velvety leather. Cure Velours. Cure Velours. Somebody's going to correct me who speaks French better, but but yeah, I think it's velvety leather. Go on, tell us about it. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little bit of something that you do in your videos, which is I, I love it. You should really you know try the fragrance. So I'm gonna. Oh yeah, you have to, unless you've only got like two two drops left. Spray my little scent explorer uh, test trip. Little, little nice. plug, little plug there. You're allowed. You're allowed to plug it. Yeah, there you go. Jack Dean is helping us a lot. It is velvet leather. Oh, it's so good. It's it starts off spicy, almost boozy. I get like a, a rum or cognac vibe here. I'm not looking at the notes right now, but there's a little bit of a floral aspect that could be iris or immortel that gives this hay, honeyed hay kind of a chord. Just so gorgeous. And if I remember correctly, I usually wear this in the fall. Here, the fall weather here is just beautiful. In New England, you get all the colors of fall foliage. And this to me smells exactly like fall foliage. You have all these almost gourmand, but not quite, uh, very woody, spicy, and, and delectable components, just a, a gorgeous leather. It dries down like a like a smooth suede uh, kind of a leather, with like the, uh, the velvet interior, if you will. Really good stuff. It, it is very good. And actually, um, thank you for mentioning that brand because I, I don't think they've made a bad perfume. I, 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 don't, I don't think there is a single dud in that range. And I seem to remember, that that particular leather is name made by a known perfumer, but I can't remember who that is. Perhaps somebody could just go on base notes. And actually, maybe somebody could go on my review of it, because I reviewed that years ago, and I, I'm pretty sure I, I, I mentioned the name of the perfumer. I love their, well, actually, we can we can let Woozy uh, say something here. Iris Sandre and Nuit de Bacalite are my favorite from that brand. I mean, the, 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 um, the tuberose, the Nuit de Bacalite, is just superb. I like uh, Bois d'Assez which is also a really, really crackling dry leather. I almost wonder whether they shot themselves a little bit in the foot as a brand and they, they released too many leathers to start with and that maybe things um, just blended into one. Thank you, Wuzi. It was Julien Rakinet. I think before he got picked up by IFF, I think he was still, and thank you, Time to Mask Up, I think he was still an independent um, perfumer then, but I could be wrong. And somebody, well, go on. No, I'm sorry. Why do you think uh, they didn't do so well or are not very talked about? Do you think, like you said, they might have shot him in the foot just because they were kind of typecasted as like, hey, these guys are only doing leathers. They don't have anything else to offer. I mean, they're amazing. Like you said, there's not one bad, you know, something that they produce. It's all. No, quality. totally. I mean, I've I've had a few. I've had a little bit of a correspondence with the people behind the brand. They couldn't be nicer. They couldn't be more charming, you know, over emails. Uh Maybe they actually just don't want the huge limelight thing. I mean, some some brands don't, don't they? I mean, they they are stocked in plenty of prestigious shops. It's not as though it's not as though they're they're hard to get. If you, I mean, you you only need to look a little bit, and then you'd find them. But maybe they just like to keep themselves to themselves, and they and they don't they don't want to be that massive. Woozy is saying they're quite popular here in Australia, which is interesting to know. Um, and isn't Naomi Goodser herself of Australian origin? I'm maybe completely wrong there, but I have a feeling she might be. 
Uh, Jazz Bob says, what I says reminded me a bit of smoked ham and I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> You're not wrong there. Um, no, that's a good one. I like that one. I like, I, I'm, I'm pleased that you mentioned that one. I and suppose- very, I very simplistic yeah. bottle too, which I love. It means like they really focus on the juice quality because there's not much bells and whistles, which a lot of brands tend to do these days. Do you know if they still remain very simplistic and, and minimalist? As, as I think like the, the bottles bottle? have changed. I think the bottles have changed because I saw somebody also leaving a comment earlier saying that you've got a, an original like vintage bottle. Um, it's either the bottles have changed or the, or the or the packaging has changed, but but I'm sure more information on that will be available on their website. So one down, and absolutely it it is it is a good one, and I should go with one. Now I wanted to start with one. I, I doubt very very many people have heard of this. This is actually from 1921. Hardly anybody ever talks about it. This is a perfume called Number no. Five from a brand called Channel. I if you laugh, then we can move on. And my lame, <laughs> lame attempt at an underrated joke. No, what I, what I, what I would like to do actually is, is start with an equally big brand. And this yeah, is that, from, that one there is like the Coca Cola or the Rolex or the Mercedes of fragrances, right there. You just talked about. <laughs> this is I got I got one lol. I got one lol from my curated life. That's okay. This is actually from an extremely well known brand, but this is a scent from 1974. So you don't get more well known than this. This is this is Garlin. Um, and this was a Jean-Paul Garlin composition from 74, I say, and it's called Eau de Garlin. So it's simply, you know, Garlin water. Uh, Time to Musk Up wants to know what number five is. Tell me more. <laughs> um, this is, um, it, it, a lot of people out there will be aware that there, there has been this tradition at Garlin that every single one of the Garlin in-house perfumers produced a, their own cologne. So the last one we had a few years ago from Thierry Vasseur was Cologne du Parfumeur. This was Jean-Paul Garlin's cologne. And I don't understand why more people don't go on about this, A, as being one of the best Garlin's, but also B, as being one of the best colognes. Because, ah, oh, it, you're, you know how you want from from the finest colognes, you want that kind of uh, illusion of like a hologram of citrus fruits, like somebody's just thrown you into this room full of like the most amazingly yellow lemons and orange oranges and yellow grapefruit and all the rest of it. And you can see it and you can smell it and you can taste it. And Eau de Garlin does it with lemon and with a really kind of green, crisp, biting verbena note, you know, really, really tart. Um, I came to really adore this a few years ago when Madame Perselais and I went over to Japan. It's the first one and only time we've been to Japan so far. I hope we'll go again soon. And I knew it was going to be hot there. It was, it was in the summer. And I thought, let me take something that will be really, really bracing and biting and refreshing, but in a completely charming, um, non-aggressive way. And I thought, yes, it'll, it'll have to be Eau de Garlin. So now I, I associate it with our trip around Tokyo and Kyoto and and, and those sorts of magical destinations. But just as a scent, um, the, the, way, the way the citruses go into the herbs, the way the, 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 the musks are gently, gently played in the base is just so superb. And I can, I'm kind of guessing from your face that you don't know this one. I don't, and I'm very curious to get a bottle. And I think in one of the uh, the decades that we did, I think you mentioned another Guerlain, which I think it was Herba something? Herba, Herba Fresca, yeah. Herba Fresca. That's another one that yeah. I'm trying to get a bottle right now currently. So that there's another one that I'm going to add to that list because I'm, I'm very taken by it. I love the Cologne genre, especially for this time of the year, you know, spring and summer. Um, anything that it comes to mind, if you would probably give me like a – a roundabout of a smell that this is similar to? Anything at all that you could uh, give me as a roundabout? Oh, well, that's an interesting one, because I'm trying, I suppose it's like, if you think of the Frederick Mal Cologne Bigarade, but this is lemon and verbena, as opposed to the blood orange of Bigarade. Um, it's a good question, actually, because it, it it is its 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 own thing. It doesn't necessarily make me think, I think what I love about it is that it doesn't try to be sweet. You know, even though it's not overly sour and bitter, it has a little bit of that, you know, mouth sucking thing, but it, it, it isn't trying to charm you or seduce you with sweetness. It doesn't mind presenting those tart notes. Um, 
So no, but I'd have to think about whether it reminds me of something else. I'm curious though, are you struggling to get a bottle of Herba Fresca? Is it not easily available in the States? Uh, I think it is, it is available. Um, you know, obviously I'm trying to go a discount route just because if you okay, pay okay. Me, yeah, yeah. But it's available. I'll definitely get them. Okay. I'll definitely get them. Uh, a, a few a few comments here. Liz saying she, that she's agreeing. Eau de Garlin is gorgeous. So agree. Um, and Time to Musk Up is saying because it's not beast mode and doesn't last five years on the skin. I'm guessing you're, you're talking about the Garlin now. And Heinke says Sean de Home is another one that no one speaks about. You're absolutely right. And Jardin de Bagatelle from Garlin. I mean, there are so many Garlins that you probably wouldn't have to look too hard to find ones that um, are underrated. But um, I've done one, you've done one. What's your second one? Next up, I'm gonna talk about a brand um, that I think got a little momentum back in 2014, I'm gonna say, but then it just completely vanished. No one talks about it anymore. I love the brand. There's one here that you're gonna see how much I love it because the bottle's almost empty. Uh, recently, I got two more of them. And I think it's a fantastic brand. It takes inspiration by, it, it combines photograph with perfumery, it combines to this amazing concept. I met the, the owner of the brand. She's an amazing woman, very talented, very visionary. Um, and the brand is called Olfactive Studio. My favorite from the brand is this one right here, Chambre Noir, which translates to dark room, I believe. And I've wore a lot of this juice. Specifically, um, I think dark bedroom or black bedroom. Okay. Now, this to me, it, it smells very close to one of my favorites of all time, which is M7 by Yves Saint Laurent. So it's like they could be cousins. It's it's in the same kind of vein. Um, let me spray here. Oh, it smells so good. There's something juicy about it. I don't know if it's plum. I'm thinking it's plum if I'm not uh, mistaken by the note breakdown. But it's a dark, uh, juicy, uh, boozy, drenched kind of a plum with some leathery undertones, spices, a bit of a floral undertone as well. But, I mean, there's so many great things about the brand. Uh, there's one fragrance that has wasabi in it. I think it's called Panorama, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this one here I love, too, Woody Mood, which I got last year. And then there's one that I got earlier this year, I think around January or February, uh, which is Iris Shot. I mean, for those of you that love Iris fragrances, this is heavenly. It's absolutely heavenly. Um, I mean, there's so many great things about this brand. It, it's just something for everyone, and they're all quality. Um, just a work of art, you know, and I think they deserve a lot of attention for what they do here, but, you know, just not combining the art of photograph. But they there's one that's um, inspired by Rio. I think it's um, something mood in Rio, something like that. But they're all great. They're all great fragrances. Like like we talked about, Naomi Good Sir not having one bad scent. I've yet to try a fragrance from this brand that is not good. They're, they're all great. Uh, and I don't know why people don't talk about the brand. It's not like they're like, you know, finishly expensive. They're actually quite affordable. Are you familiar? No, absolutely. And I agree with you. Still Life in Rio is the one that you're after, according to Woozy. And I should also say, just because I sort of corrected you earlier, but I think I may have been wrong. Cine Sun says Chambre Noire means dark room in reference to photography. So maybe maybe it's a play on words as well, because I suppose it could mean sort of like dark or black bedroom, but specifically in relation to photography. Give me a second. Uh, we're live. Well, I can't give you a second, but I'll just wrap it. What are you going to find now? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to I, I wanted to prove a point. They are right. It is it is still life and real, and I do love it. I mean, that's another one that I wore a lot. There you go. Of. This is great, great fragrance for it is inspired by um a Brazilian drink called the Caipirinha, which involves this uh white rum called cachaça made out of sugar cane. And it's got so many great things here, like the limes, uh the, the sugar cane, uh, the actual booziness of the rum. It's like party in the bottle. And she does a great job making these fragrances and, and you know, working with these perfumers, you know, the whole idea, the concept and, and the actual execution. Absolutely. Incredible um, brand. I, I can't remember whether you said her name. C Céline Verlure, right? Céline Verlure, yep. Yeah. The, the uh, Chambre Noir is an interesting one because that was one occasion where I sort of did a post on personalize.com a few years ago where I basically said um, my initial assessment of this perfume was wrong. 
And actually, I think it's oh. really good. And and every now and then I have revisited that and gone back and said, I think maybe I, I, I didn't judge this the right way or I was harsh because my initial take on Chambre Noir was, um, though I wasn't overly impressed with it, but then I remember smelling it in a completely different setting. It's curious that it reminds you of M7. Yeah. It it's, actually, go on. It's to me a more wearable version of M7. I think M7 is very unapologetic, dark and in your face and bold. This here has a lot of those dark components, but it's a little bit more subtle and more inviting, if you will. But I'm sorry, you were saying? No, because I was saying that it reminds me of another YSL. To me, it, it, it has lots of shades of opium, but maybe that's because I'm kind of really going strongly with that, with that plum, that boozy plum note. And maybe you're looking at the sort of Woody Air aspects. From Olfactive uh, Studio, um, I was really taken with their violet shot uh, from last year, I think, or maybe the year before, composed by Dominique Hopion. I have uh, to try that. I have to try that one. It is really good. And Denby says here, I hear good things about their Chypre shot by Bertrand Duchaufour. Because I think the one that you held up just now, the did you show leather? Uh, this is Iris shot. Iris. Uh, so I, I forget which way, because I think vanilla... Vanilla leather Chypre shot was Duchaufour and Iris rose violet was Dominique Ropion, I th I think. Um, but no, again, it's it's nice to it's nice to highlight that brand. It's nice it's nice to, to 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 give them a platform like this. So thank you for that one. I should do one next. Uh, let me go. Let me do this now. I I I, I hesitated about this one because this is a brand that I'm. I have talked about on my channel before, but not many people will uh, know about. Um, I hesitated to mention this one because it comes from a part of the world that is quite troubled at the moment. And I thought, well, you know, do we really want to be talking about perfume in relation to this part of the world? But I'm doing it out of a sort of sense of optimism in the hope that maybe the troubles, the, the country I'm talking about is India, in the hope that the troubles in India will soon pass, but this video will hopefully be around for a long time and people will watch it and people will try to check out this brand. This is a totally, totally independent Indian brand called Suganthko. And not only is it a totally independent Indian brand, but it only exists in one city in India, that city being Lucknow. And actually Lucknow is um, also particularly troubled at the moment because of the pandemic. I was very fortunate a few years ago to, to, go, to go to Lucknow and to go and visit, um, and I need to put this on skin because it's a rollable, um, and to go and visit their shop, really, really beautiful, small, cozy, but charming shop in the center of Lucknow. And they just make these most amazing things. You can, if you if you Google them, if you go to their website, and, and I will put their name um, on in the video description below, they do ship around the world, but I know that because of the global situation at the moment, they kind of stop and start their their shipping. So the last time I checked, they weren't shipping to the UK, but I think that may resume again because I guess that, that there are just logistical issues that they that they can't um, that, that that they need to deal with at the moment. This one in particular here called Gudra, which as you can probably see is a fragrance oil, is just the most perfect rose. Um, no, sorry, the most perfect jasmine soliflor. The rose is the other one. The rose is another one, which I've got as well. It's, they do, they, they do soliflors. They do quite sort of simplistic floral scents. They do really, really Baroque operatic compositions. They also do really fantastic incense sticks. If you ever want to stock up on some good incense sticks, check them out because they're very affordable and they're really very good. I mean, this one is absolutely what you would want from a jasmine solly floor. It just feels like you're walking past jasmine petals in the evening. So the sun hasn't quite set and yet the jasmine's its petals are, are releasing their scent. It's got that, that banana inflection that you want. It's got that slightly tobacco-y feel. It's got that green feel. It's got that rosy honeyed side to it. Um, I was so impressed with them. And one day I would actually like to get the people from the brand on an interview on uh, here on YouTube. Um, I think they're on their fourth generation, I want to say, of perfumers. It's 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 a family-owned business. Um and it it is just it's just really, really good stuff. I you probably I mean chances are you haven't heard of them, but no. Sounds incredible though. I mean fourth generation. I mean it sounds like they're doing something right. They've been doing it for a while. So I'm I'm very curious. 
Third, third or fourth generation, I think. And it was one of those really, really special uh, encounters that happens sometimes when you travel where I went in and uh, it smelt lots of stuff and told them what I do and they were really interested. And then after that, we also emailed each other a few times and, and made a connection. It was, and the shop was so busy. The shop was insanely busy. It isn't the, um, the, the it isn't the largest shop in the world, but gosh, were people coming in and out and obviously lots and lots of regular customers and people who uh, know the place from, from all across India. Did they work with different ranges like ouds and stuff like that, or tars, or they're just mostly focused on florals? No, the 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 whole spectrum. And I remember when I was there as well, I said, "Can you please, you know, let me try something that you would consider to be quite old fashioned, quite classic?" Um, and they let me smell. I want to get the name right. I'm, I, I think it was amber musk, but if it isn't, I'll, I'll mention it in the video description below, which was, I think, one that they had made in the 70s and they still sell. And it wow. was this really, really kind of vintage feeling, grand um, room filling thing. So so do do check them out. And if you do check them out, tell them that Persilase and Max sent you because they'd probably be interested to hear that. I think that's a funny uh, topic to talk about, you know, top room filling fragrances that people will smell you on the way in and they'll keep smelling you on the way out and they'll, and they'll keep smelling when you're gone for good. <laughs> One of those uh, well, entity type scents. Uh, poison would have to be on that list, wouldn't it? Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Remix says, I'm definitely going to check them out. It sounds beautiful. I mean, they, they really are. And also you would you will probably end up paying more for shipping than you would for the perfumes themselves because they're really not terribly expensive at all. So what is your third one, sir? So we're talking about generations here. I have to talk about a fragrance that has been around for quite a while, as they claim it's sixth generation. And the fragrance I'm talking about, it's Aventus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about that at all. Uh, I think I'm going to do um, a designer here. This is a designer house that I think is, is from Spain, for sure. And this particular one is absolutely lovely. It smells like cigarettes and cloves, which is like a really weird combination, but it smells actually really good. Uh, it's not Italie d'Orange. It's Lovi 7 is the name of the fragrance, but Lovi is a Spaniard wow. brand. They have a lot of great uh, little offerings, very inexpensive, but quite good. And I think they've been around for quite a while too. Um, gets absolutely no play here. I know they're very big in Spain and in some parts of Europe. I, I hope somebody watching here can vouch for the quality. This one here is amazing. It's like this, it opens up very smoky and, and clovey, like like I said, like a, like a clove cigarette. Gudungarong, I think was the name of the cigarette from Bali back in the day in the 80s. It was very popular in early 90s. But then it dries down to this creamy and almost soapy sandalwood. So it's really multifaceted and, and very, you know, complex type of a scent. For a designer, it's really bizarre. Like I was taken by when I first smelled this fragrance because this is something that a niche brand would do. I think uh, Etalib d'Orange has one that is cigarettes, jazz, uh, right? Cigarette at, at Jasmine or something like that. Jasmine and cigarettes, yeah. Yeah. So it reminds me of that, but this is obviously more wearable and more quote unquote mass appealing, but the cloves here are quite big. And I think a lot of people don't will not like this because of the cloves, uh, but it's to me, it's gorgeous. It's a nice little fragrance that I like to wear, keeping it in the hush because no one really talks about it, but quite nice. And I like, I like the bottle too. It's, it's quite different. We should, we should just give a couple of seconds to the issue of pronunciation because I don't know what the correct way of pronouncing that brand is, but I've always pronounced it Loewe. Um, but <sighs> who knows? You're right. It's a brand that's very much under the radar, even though last time I checked, like in the UK, they are available at Harrods. So it's not as though they're under the radar in terms of um, retail outlets. Um, but they're not talked about very much. And I remember, I remember going to an event of theirs a very, very, very long time ago when they were launching something and then and then and then the sort of the hype disappeared um I, there was at least one person gonzalo saying i really enjoy that one max so there you not go. available here in the us uh, uh darish you can't really find this in any of the general stores it's like really in unexistent here in, in america which is sad uh you have to get it from discounters or overseas um and they have I another one it. 
because this is the one that's called seven, right? Correct. I have a feeling that that is that is a reference to the number of ingredients in the scent. That it was a, a thing that was just done with seven materials. But somebody will um, will correct us. They have another one called Solo that's quite good too. It has this gorgeous citrus, you know, up front with some guava, very tropical, um, a little tinge of uh, aquatic, but it's like a, a rather bold aquatic scent, very fruity and woody at the base. It's called Solo Lovi. Also amazing. Uh, okay. Those are two two of the fragrances from this brand that I highly suggest trying because they're quite good and and you know above and beyond what a designer fragrance oh, is these days. Uh, you've got another agreement here. Benjamin saying, I grew up with the smell of Loewe Essencia everywhere. My dad's favorite brand, not talked about much, but they smell great. Um, Denby saying that Rich Mitch claims that Loewe Purom is a holy grail masculine. Well, I got to uh, get that. Definitely an underrated brand fragrance wise. Uh, Nick saying Loewe Essencia has a gorgeous foresty smell to it. So, yeah, people obviously aware of it, but it's not one that is massively on our radar. So no, thank you for that one. Um, and, the, and the reason why I don't talk much about this brand is exactly what I said before. It's not readily available. And I'd say 75% of my audience is American. So I don't talk much about it because they won't be able to get it that easy. That's why, but it is a great brand. Yeah. yeah. No, that's fair enough. Okay. Uh, time for me to do my third one. I'm trying to work out which way round to do. Let's do this one because it, it's one that I have talked about a fair bit on my channel, but I still think should get more love. This is from 2018. So this is the most recent one on the list. And it's Testa di Moro from Salvatore Ferragamo, the the, the exclusive Ferragamo range. Um, and this one was composed by Fabrice Pellegrin, a genius perfumer, probably also actually an underrated perfumer. And this one was one of those true, true, true love at first scent experiences for me. Um, I remember thinking that it was like a kind of 21st century update of um, Antaeus, of Chanel Antaeus. And I stand by that. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's just the most heart pumping, you know, blood pumping, incense -y leather, just all of the most resinous balsamic notes that you could imagine in the base really, really fiery, really heated. And and yeah, even smelling it now, I haven't smelt it for a little while. I haven't worn it for a little while. I'm thinking this, this does have that huge, huge, huge chest pumping leather of, of Antaeus and, and the sweet beeswaxy feeling of, um, of Antaeus in the base. And yet I guess what makes it a bit more contemporary, a bit more modern, is that it isn't quite as harsh as Antaeus, and some of the rough edges have been smoothed out, and maybe it's just a tiny little bit easier on the volume control, you know, maybe it's a little bit quieter. Um, but the spices in the top, I, I mean, you know, I, I don't understand why there aren't more people going, oh my God, this is one of the best masculines we've had uh, for years. Maybe it's because this line is fairly under the radar. Do you know this one, Max? I don't know that one. I am extremely, you know, inclined to getting it because you said it's one of the best masculines you've smelled in a while. Um, the brand itself, I don't own any of their fragrances, but I know it's very good quality because I've been to their boutique in New York and it's just absolutely gorgeous. I think what I refrained from purchasing was the price point because I think they're not even 100 mil and I think they're close to 300 bucks. Um, that is why I think I didn't pick anything up at this point. But they are very good quality from what I tried. I haven't tried. What is that one called again? Test, testa di Moro. Testa di Moro. The, the Moor's Head. Okay. That one is 100 mil. The thing with Ferragama, I think, is they have a very, very, very clear division between their mainstream scents and their more exclusive ones. And some of the mainstream ones, I guess, are, shall we say, very, very mainstream but I think they reserve the really good stuff for, for this range. Uh, some love coming through for this one. Denby says, love this one. Sotti is saying, um, I have that one. Denby agreeing that it's a lovely suede incense. Um, anybody else on this one? Uh, certainly more interesting than current Antaeus, says Kim. I, I like current Antaeus, though. I still wear current Antaeus. I have a lot of time for Antaeus. But no, this is, this is one where... Um, I feel that 
people should sort of check it out. So the next time you are by a um, Ferragamo counter, um, do check this one out. Retail for two eighty, by the way. Say retail, again. Retail for that is two hundred eighty USD. It's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot of money. I mean, that's not cheap by any stretch of the imagination. But I will try for sure. Uh, so we need to get, get get going. What's number four? Number four. Now it gets really hard now because we'll do some honorable mentions in the end, you know. But I, I want to keep it kind of like you know the ones that really don't get much love that really deserve. And this one here is a company from Paris, but I think she's from uh, the Palestine, if I'm not mistaken. And the brand is just outstanding. Gorgeous amber, gorgeous oud. This is my favorite. This is what I'm going to bring to light here. And the brand is called Rania J. And this is T. Rabanero, which is like a Maduro, um, you know, tobacco cigar that is just perfect. I mean, it, it transposed that whole experience in this bottle. It's smoky. It's leathery. It's got all the different nuances and, and flavors of tobacco, especially the darker facets. Oh, amazing. The bitterness, um, you know, uh, the little cocoa vibe that you get with some tobacco nuances. It is just heavenly. I mean, this is one of my favorite, like in the top three favorite tobaccos of all time, Tia Rabanero from Rania J. I don't know if you guys have tried it. Um, I think it's there's de very deserving of attention. Price-wise, they're not very expensive for what they're giving you here. Uh, beast performance, the stuff just lasts and lasts, you know. And the compositions themselves are just incredible. They have one that's called uh, Ombre Loop, I think it's called, and it's just like one of the best ambers I've ever tried. Um, everything I've tried from the brand. I think I have five from the brand. They also have one that's called Lavande 44, I think it's called, which is like a gorgeous barbershop. I mean, the list just goes on and on. The quality and just incredible ingredients. You can attach for it right from the first spray. This is this is amazing. If you love tobacco, this is a must try. Um, are you familiar with the brand? Yes, and I remember I went through a phase of trying samples of it. I need to ask a Schwaka question actually because I'm just trying to work out. I don't know. I don't know all of my trendy abbreviations. What's IIRC again? If no, I can't remember what IIRC. Mr. P is not a fan of it because I I think I did a review of this one on the blog. But as I'm sitting here, I genuinely cannot remember whether I liked it or not. So, oh, do you, do you so remember I, Yeah, I think, it? So, I think I did. I think I did. Somebody will, will be able to, to, to find out. So either Ashfaq is basing that comment on remembering my review or you're kind not of... Not a fan of it. I can't remember. I can't remember. Somebody will go online. But what's IIRC again? If, no, if I'm... I can't remember. Oh, geez, this is this is. I'm I'm too old to know what all of these. <laughs> if I remember correctly, I knew it was something like that. Thank you very much. If I remember correctly, if I recall correctly, um, so, uh, oh, here we go. Somebody's quoting my review at me, Max. Here we go. Oh boy. Opens as wonderfully brash 80s man concoction, tobacco, nutmeg, and strong woods. Grows too quiet, but remains charming. That's okay. That's a positive review. Yeah. Yeah, so, he, like, he, he doesn't love it, but he likes it. You know, it's okay, you know? Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. I, and I, I'm uh, a bit more enthusiastic about it, but it's okay, yes, you know? Absolutely. But but that's fine. I'm I'm this is very surreal having your words <laughs> thrown back at you. It's like you mustn't ever say the wrong thing here because somebody that's will got, just go <laughs> You gotta be careful with the internet because we you know absolutely. whatever you say, it stays there for life. So I obviously did kind of think that it had that it had a lot going for it, but maybe I was just not um not overly overly enthusiastic, as you say. Okay. I think the brand is pretty good. I, I'm, I'm highlighting T. Rabanero, but I think, I mean, she has, I think, eight different ranges here. And and like I said, Lavande is a great barber shop. If you like Amber, Amber Loop, I think is a fantastic Amber. Um, but, you know, T. Rabanero is what it is. But, yeah, I, I just wanted to give her a little shout out because I think it's a brand that you don't hear anything about. And I think no. it's deserving of some, some mention here. That's true. And somebody's actually quoting um, a negative review of mine on that brand, but never mind. People can read the live chat later or they can go and get the review. <laughs> so it's, out, it's out there for people to see. My fourth one is from 2016. And again, a brand that I think deserves more attention, Ulrich Lang, the New York-based brand. And this is um, Apsu. They've just released a new one, but I haven't smelt it. I forget what it's called. I've, I've seen it being mentioned um, on their Instagram. And I was so taken with this from the moment I tried it. Um, I found myself thinking quite a bit about green scents 
when I was thinking of these underrated ones. And maybe that's because I think that green scents are generally underloved and underrated. But this was, ah, this is, it's named after a goddess of water, I believe, but I forget from, from which mythology or from which religion. Um, and, and, it, and it is just the most gorgeous evocation of water and watery notes and very, very still water. It's got a, a leafy feel to it, like a kind of banana leaf as well. And maybe that's coming through from a very, very gentle touch of a green jasmine note. Um, it's one of those, it's one of those cut through the heat of, a, of an overly sticky summer's day type sense. And I think it has done well for the brand and yet the brand itself doesn't seem to be talked about as much as you would expect it to. Last time I checked in the UK, they were available at Liberty. So again, a pretty high profile retailer. Um, but, but you know, th this, this, this should be shouted out, uh, shouted about as, as one of the best greens we've had in, in the last five or so years. And I put it on my um, list of the best perfumes of that year, but I don't think anybody else did. What um, is that one called again? Apsu, Apsu. Sorry, I don't think I said the name. Apsu. Okay, I have yeah. on, I have on there from, from their collection, which I yeah. absolutely adore. Uh, and you're right, they they have quality stuff, and it's w weird that people don't talk about. It. They're from New York, which is which is awesome. Yes, and and Ulrich Lang himself couldn't be more charming. Couldn't be a, a better ambassador for the for the brand. Um, and it is curious, isn't it, why some things just go under the radar. Um, uh, uh, Joanna is saying, yes, Apsu on my wish list. And speaking of greens, Green Spell by Eris deserves all the attention. Absolutely, Green, green Spell is amazing by Antoine Lee. And Kim here saying that Nightscape by Ulrich Lang is very good too. Um, and I seem to remember there was another one that reminded me a lot of Bois Farine from L'Artisan Parfumer, but I can't remember what it was called. Uh, that, that is, was really Bois, is Bois Farine the one that smells like a peanut butter cookie on, on the opening? See, that's interesting because to an American, it probably would, because maybe that's what your frames of reference would be. Yeah, it smells doughy. It smells of flour, as in flour, you know, baking flour. Um, interesting. Interesting that you would you would think that. So uh, that was my fourth, fourth one. And we're on to our last ones um, before we run, before the time runs away with us. I'm really curious now. What's the last one going to be? Very tough to do this one. You know, I, I have to talk about a fragrance here. And you know this because we talked off air. We talked when we did our, our decades. I think three brands that I absolutely love that I think don't deserve the attention that they, you know, they don't get the attention they deserve would be L'Artisan Perfumé, uh, Serge Luton's, and Anique Coutal. Uh, and I put them in, in the same kind of, a, especially old, old versions of these brands. And I'm going to go with one here that Anique Coutal herself made for her husband in 1985. This to me is a masterpiece of a fragrance. I spoke very highly of this in our 80s video. If you guys haven't watched that, this is one of my picks, by the way, a little spoiler alert. And this is Sables uh, from Anique Coutal. This, is, this to me is an end all be all masterpiece amber fragrance. If you want a masterpiece amber, go with this one. You're not gonna regret it. It's got herbal nuances. It has this incredible boozy accord up top that's just so enveloping and so interesting. Um, the amber here is, is just, perfectly executed uh, and again she made this for her husband utilizing her favorite ingredients that she thought would smell amazing on him because she wanted him to smell different and boy ah uh, it's a spicy warm leather that is just you know a leathery ambery ah uh, it's amazing it's got so many spices here it's almost, you know, in the beginning it has this curly mary uh feel to it because I think there's cumin here if I'm not mistaken quite a uh, heavy dose of cumin, I, I should say. But then it- Check, it, it, check, check this out, Max. Pancakes with curry maple syrup. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but I mean, it, it's quite unique. It's quite different. It's quite fantastic. And I think the brand has been reformulated and changed. Like the presentation now looks amazing. But that's one thing that we should talk about in one of our, our conversations here, which is something that I like to mm. bring to light. A lot of companies these days are focusing on a story and the presentation just to lure the people in. Oh, you have this beautiful bottle. But when it comes to the juice themselves, they're very lackluster. And this company here, when they're very simple, I'm telling you guys, the juices were just amazing. And they have one of the best vetivers I've ever tried. I mean, uh, I think there's one called Mir Ardente, which is a myrrh one that's just 
out of this world good. I mean, the whole range is just fantastic. When she was around, I'm telling you, the brand was one of the best ever. The same thing from L'Artisan before they got reformulated and changed it to the dark bottles, old school stuff, Bertin du Chafour stuff, just masterpieces. Serge Luton's before they changed to this bottle. You know, if you get anything before this, this, this bottle, they're still good. You know, they're still good, but they lost a lot of their oomph, a lot of the power, a lot of the, you know, the, the potent um, vibrancy that they had with older formulations. I don't know why companies do that, but it is what it is. But, you know, Andy Gutal is, is one of the greats, and I think that they don't ever get talked about. So I wanted to, to bring light, you know, that this stuff is just amazing. For the, for the benefit of our uh, French-speaking viewers, just so that they don't get offended, I think they would probably say that we're supposed to say sable, but, but I may be wrong, because I think it means sand. It's the plural of sand, sands. I haven't smelt sable for oh, so the, the, lo the longest time, but, but lots and lots of love for it here. Thea saying sable, beautiful on men. Elva Nui saying sable is magnificent, just breathtaking. One person's got a question for you here. Uh, if I can find it. How does it compare with Ambre Sultan and Grand Soir? It's a different type of amber. This is going to be a more culinary amber, if you will. Uh, there's definitely the curry, the cumin. There's, there's a lot of those, uh, quote unquote, cooking spices. Uh, if you can get past that, it's actually, it turns out beautifully, almost like a sand, like, like the name would imply, sables. It's very sandy, very, uh, it's like an outer layer of skin, but just envelops you perfectly. It's, it's sensual, it's seductive, it's, it's spicy, it's, 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 a, it's amazing. It's, it's, to me, like I said, a masterpiece. But Grand Soir is a lot stickier. It's more on a syrupy, more gour almost gourmandy. It's a little different, uh, you know, going into like a more thicker and denser kind of a vibe. And what was the other? Amber Sultan is another great one. Um, those were like the, the top probably five best embers you can buy right now uh, in the top five for sure. Grand Soir is amazing. Portland Soir is amazing too. And, and, and it has a lot of a honey animalic uh, kind of a feel to it. I, I love embers. So, you know. And actually you mentioned reformulation. That would be an interesting topic for us to just have as a kind of open forum where we're just having a discussion. Maybe not necessarily, maybe we should do a video like that one day where we're not really smelling perfumes as such, but just having a discussion with everybody watching. Because I think I would take the stand, uh, stand slightly, slightly different from yours. I mean, absolutely reformulation happens. There is no way that we could say that reformulation doesn't happen. But I think sometimes the whole reformulation thing is is overplayed a little bit. And, and, and I think sometimes older bottles smell more potent to us just because they're older bottles. You know? I got you. But um, one thing you have to keep in mind though, Darish, I don't want to cut you, but I want to just leave my two cents here. We can definitely do a video on this. Companies are businesses. And the problem is when these huge conglomerates, you know, and I don't, I'm not going to name them today. We'll talk about it when we do this video, when they take over the quote unquote smaller niche brands and they restructure and revamp the brands, they're looking to make more price per mill. And, and, and there's a lot of things that happen behind closed doors. But again, we'll leave it in the open here to talk about. It's sensitive subjects. It, it, it gets a lot of people talking, a lot of people, you know, you, 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 you like you shake their cages. But I think it's important to talk about those, those topics. No, ab ab absolutely, absolutely. And I agree with you. Liquid gold conversation. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I, I actually have a personal cup and saucer not a mug i should bring that to one of the okay thank you very much for that and the last one from me now i didn't want to do anything on this video that is um discontinued because i thought well you know you could you could easily talk about lots of scents which were brilliant but should not have been discontinued and this one i think is discontinued in some markets but i had a look online and it seems to be available in a sufficient number of places for me to say okay uh, let, let's do this one. That's another great is, topic, though, uh, Darius. Uh, gr great, amazing fragrances that should have never been discontinued. That's another oh, good Oh, gosh. One. Yeah. But, I mean, yes. Yeah. We, we, sh we should. This is Kenzo Jungle Purong. So the men's version of Kenzo Jungle from 1998, composed by Olivier Cresp. And I have a feeling, I could be wrong, I have a feeling that Celine Verlour of Olfactive Studio was at Kenzo and was the creative uh, force behind this when it because because she her her perfume heritage goes back to to Kenzo. Um, this is the last time I was in Europe, which now feels like it was eighty nine years ago. Um, 
this was still ready, readily available in very, very, you know, mainstream outlets like Sephora. And I think if you go to the uh, French version of Sephora, you will find it. So that's when I kind of thought, okay, so this is still available, even though I don't think it's listed on the official Kenzo catalog anymore. So I don't know what that means. Um, ah, but this is, this is the best spicy lactonic wood scent. It, it, it's just so great. The spice composition in here is so clear and distinct. And weirdly enough, I know I know that I kind of don't talk about Amouage so much anymore, but weirdly, it's making me think a lot of um, material from, from Amouage. No, sorry, not material, Boundless. I'm still getting the two mixed up. Boundless from um, Amouage. And I hadn't made the connection until right now. Um, because yes, it's got it's got nutmeg, cardamom, cinnamon, cloves, pepper, all in this um very, very clearly defined blend so that you can pick each one out. And it's all on this perfect, perfect creamy, lactonic, sandalwoody, woody, cedary base. Um and and the, the 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 remarkable thing that it does, I think, is that it manages to make all of these quite warm ingredients very very bracing and refreshing so it's all of the it's all of the freshest side of all of those spices probably because of the use of the the cardamom because cardamom tends to have this cooling effect on everything um and i i always i always enjoy wearing it do you know this one 100% love it. I have the, the same exact bottle you do. I did a video a little while ago when, when Candle passed away. I did a video talking about, you know, paying homage to the brand. And, and that was in my top five. I think it was actually my number one. And it's, an, it's a gorgeous fragrance. Like you said, it's got this green, cooling, spicy effect that, that transitions to this lectonic uh, sandalwood creamy base. Just, just incredible fragrance. I think it has been discontinued, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And, and I think maybe somebody can help us. Do you know what the little brush on top of the bottle is supposed to to, to be? Like, as I had never figured that out. It's a, it's a zebra, isn't it? Because for the jungle, for um, or zebra, I should say maybe the for the jungle for the two women's jungles, there was a tiger and there was an elephant, wasn't there? And so the the boys got the the zebra. I think okay. that's what it's meant to be. I got you. I got you. Yeah, it's an amazing fragrance. And I, I think, unfortunately, it has been discontinued, you know, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong. But from what the research I did, it has been, you know, axed from, from the, the portfolio. So if you like the sound of it, those of you watching, go online now because there are still bottles available online, but it may be that they're not available online for um, much longer. So I guess we're done. I'm going to give the, the broadcast another couple of minutes or so for people to shout out some of their own underrated gems. What are some of yours? And then we'll, 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 we'll bring them up on screen. But you wanted to talk about honorable mentions. I don't particularly have any today, Max, but you go for it. So what, what were some of your honorable mentions? Just a couple. Uh, I think Slumber House does really fine stuff. Uh, Pear and Olive is one of the ones I love from the brand. Just, just quickly here. Imaginary Authors has some incredible ones, too. Um, there's one that's called something of a trespasser. I can't remember the whole name, but it's also amazing. Vanilla, boozy, creamy. Um, and, and then MDCI parfums. I mean, Chypre Palatin, Invasion mm -hmm. Barbar, you know, just, just some of these brands that I think are deserving of your attention. And, and then one more designer here would be Costume National. I mean, Soul is right there with La Deux de Zerto Marocain, with uh, Mitsa from Dior. It's in the same kind of genre. Uh, obviously, Om is amazing. Om Parfum, both made uh, by uh, Dominique Ropian, which is a great nose. I mean, just just some little little gems here and there that you guys should should check it out. These are these are great companies that that people don't talk about much. No, absolutely, and and thanks for mentioning Slumber House. And we've got uh, we've got the, the the joke of the day goes to Bren, who's saying the tiger is a unicorn now. <laughs> I like it. Um, some underrated choices, though. Jack has got a few. Underrated for me is Ensemble Mythique by Garland. They aren't promoting it at all. I hope it doesn't get discontinued, says Jack. And Joanna mentioning Lilith by Callahan, which has been discontinued and never tried it. And Pergola by Exaltatum. Uh, Ashwag saying Henry Jack, but it's not underrated, though. I'm like in the UK, Henry Jack, you can only get at Harrods in a beautiful, beautiful a department of the Salon de Parfum on the top floor of Harrods. But thanks for mentioning them. I mean, some of their stuff is very, very good. Yura uh, wants to mention 
Aaron Terence Hughes Arabica, a beautiful coffee, vanilla and lavender scent. Natasha says, favorite underrated perfume is Lacrima by Liquide Imaginaire. I don't know that one, actually. I know the brand, but I don't know. Um, great name for a, for a perfume. Translates to tears, right? Mm -hmm. Tears, Lacrima? Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, Open by Roger Gallet is underrated. Interesting. Um, and Denby, we'll let you have the last word. Garlin Mitsuko, the lost Garlin, hardly ever spoken about, but an interesting take on Coty's Chypre with an added peach skin top note. Thank you very much. <laughs> well done. Um, and another one that I actually wanted to mention, if we're talking honorable mentions, is Parfum de Nicolai, with all of their perfumes made by Patricia de Nicolai. But that's because I, I didn't have, I, I've got hardly any of their scents except for like very, very small vials and things. And, and I didn't want to bring a little vial onto the, onto the program. Oh, loads of, loads of um, uh, suggestions coming through now. So if you're watching the video, please make sure you click on the live chat option so that you can see what people are saying because I can see lots and lots of suggestions coming through right now. Thank you very much as always to all of you for tuning in and watching. Huge thanks to you, Mr. Forty, for giving us your suggestions and for making the time. I will let you have the last word. What would you like to say? My pleasure to be here. I love your, your fan base. They're incredible, very knowledgeable. I go back and look at these uh, live uh, comments because it's a lot of knowledge that I want to take in, especially the, the suggestions and recommendations. I'm definitely going to go through them. Thanks so much for having me. It was a pleasure. And of course, we're going to continue. If you guys haven't watched, go check out the decades. We talked about the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s and on my channel. The 2000s are coming in a couple weeks, and then we're doing the 2010s to close out the decades. Just incredible, fun time to talk about perfumes. So thanks for being here with us. You know, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much, Max. And thanks again, everybody. See you soon.